Father, we worship you this morning. It doesn't matter where we are right now. It doesn't matter the situation we find ourselves. Yes. God is about to do new things in Amen. our lives. In the name of Jesus, you, Jesus. we will look unto the Lord who is our helper. Yes. In the name of Jesus, he is our source. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you this morning. In your own words, I just want you to begin to bless the name of the Lord. Do not wait for me to raise a song. Just open up your mouth and begin to give him praise. He's your father. He's your God. He's your Lord. We give you thanks, Father. We bless your Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter how far we've gone, how low, how deep we've gone. The blood of Jesus is always speaking for us. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you this morning. Hallelujah. We bless you. We come boldly into your presence this morning by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary is the blood that gives me strength from death. Does, the blood of Jesus. I say it doesn't matter how far you've gone, how deep or how low you've been, the blood still speaks yes. mercy, peace. Yes. He still speaks love, favor. Oh. It's rich to the For the love that you have for us, oh God. Yes. Your reckless love that reaches out to us every blessed day. Yes. Father, we glorify you. We worship you, Jesus. Towards you. 
every day by day. No matter what you're going through, He still seeks after you. He looks after you. He runs after you each day to make sure that you are okay, to make sure that everything is well with you. Father, we thank you for the love. We give you praise, oh God. Yes, Father. We honor you this morning. Yes, Lord. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's bless his name. Thank Hallelujah. You, thank you, Father. We bless your name. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We're ready to bless him this morning. Awesome is your name. 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 Hey, faithfulness. 
your name Faithful is 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 your name Awesome you do mighty things, so loud. Yeah, you're a faithful God. Awesome. One more time, you do mighty things in heaven and earth, in our lives. Hey, awesome is your name. Awesome is your name. Sing one more time. Say, You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Hallelujah. Oh God, awesome is your name. You do glorious things. You do mighty things in our midst. Even in our lives, Lord. All we need to do is just to believe in your name, just to believe in your word, oh God. And that is why we have come to you this day. At your feet we bow to worship you, God. We bless your name, we bless your name. Down at your feet, oh Lord, is the most high place. In your presence, Lord. I seek your face I seek your face Everybody say down at your feet Down Come on At your feet Is the most high Is the most high Oh In your presence Lord Jesus I seek your face, uh, I seek your face, there is no, there is no higher calling, no greater honor than to bow and kneel before your
Ramana. Give him praise this morning. Let's give him praise. If you believe in what you just yes. sang, if you believe in what you just said, just lift him up all over the place this morning. Thank him for our God is good. Father, we just want to thank you this morning. We praise you. You are the rock of our salvation. Hallelujah. We declare you exalted here this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. It does not matter what we're going through. It does not matter what I see. It does not matter how I feel. All I know is that you are exalted this morning. You are exalted in my situation. You are exalted in my circumstance. You are exalted in this church. You are exalted amongst your people. You are exalted among the nations this morning. We give you praise. We exalt you. Just lift up your hands this morning. Lift up your hands all over the room and just thank God. Exalt him. Exalt him in your heart. Give him praise. 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 Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Folks, I want you to know this morning that no matter what your circumstance is or what your situation is, Psalm 23 declares, the Lord is my shepherd. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your circumstance is. But I want you to repeat it to yourself this morning. Say with me, the Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd. Go back home and go and look at that. Go back home and go and look the following, the, the signs that followed. I shall not want. Yes. Not for comfort, not for your needs, not for any situation. This morning, join me as we pray in that line to pray for New Jersey and Taiwan. We know there are earthquakes and natural disasters there. Just pray this morning. God is still on the throne. Yes. Just pray for, yes, pray for Taiwan. Pray for Taiwan. Pray for Taiwan this morning. Pray for New Jersey. Yes. Just pray for them. Thank God for them. Bless God for them. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise. We exalt you. Thank you for Taiwan. Thank you for New Jersey. 
thank you for the natural disasters. We bless your holy name. Because we know this morning that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell within. And therefore, we got to give you praise because nothing takes you by surprise. Therefore, in the name of Jesus this morning, we thank you and we bless you. Because even in the midst of all of this, you will still create a way where people will still experience the goodness of God. Father, we bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Father, we thank you for New Jersey. We thank you for Taiwan. You said if our gospel be hid, it is hidden to them who are perishing, whom the God of this world has blinded their minds. Even in this situation, we thank you because they will still experience the saving knowledge and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because it is your will that no man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And this morning, we just declare, O oh God, that this will happen for the people of Taiwan, the people of New Jersey, that even in the midst of all the recovery and everything that is going on, Jesus will still be exalted. Jesus will still be lifted up. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you honor because you are the only one that brings hope to men. Because Jesus is the only hope of the world. We give you praise and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, all right, all right. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing this week? How are we doing this morning? All right, just say hello to somebody next to you and just say, I'm glad to see you in church. You are all welcome this morning. We thank God for you. We thank God for your life. We thank God for your week. We thank God for all that he has done for you this week. Like I said this morning, the Lord is your shepherd. And because he's a shepherd, you will not want. In the name of Jesus. Uh, we welcome all of you and everyone watching online. We just want to thank God for you. And we just want to give praise to God for you. Uh, if this is your first time, we hope it's not going to be your last time. And we hope that you will just keep watching. We have one aim, and that is the fact that we are building a Jesus community that is ready to serve our world. And if you think you have a part in this, we ask you to just come join us as we uh, go along with the vision that God has given to uh, this house. So we thank God for you, and I hope to see you. If this is your first time, um, or you are visiting again, I will be glad to see you after the service. I really want to, you know, uh, just interact with you and see uh, where you are. If there's any need that you have, we're not promising you that we can meet every need, but what we're promising you is that we know him who can meet every need. And that's the only person that we're going to introduce to you. So talk to me after the service and we will uh, go from there, all right? Okay, um, this morning, um, I just quickly, in a few minutes, I just quickly want to introduce, uh, just let you know, that we have a new format of service. I saw a lot of you who don't like coming in at 10 o'clock because it's, uh, it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's the news uh, program. Uh, we have uh, a new method of programming. And so service starts at 10. At 10 o'clock exactly, there'll be a call to service. And you know, uh, we just go straight into the service and praise and worship and we can go, uh, we'll go from there. All right, so service starts at 10. I know so many of you, sometimes, somehow in your mind, you have put it at 10.05 because that's when we finish our pre-service so that you can escape that, but now it starts at 10. So please endeavor uh, to be a part of that. All right, so um, also before I take my seat, I'll just let you know uh, that uh, in place of the pre-service, we have a Go News. We're still developing all that uh, process and all that methods. And now our news will come through uh, the Go News. And you will see it immediately. I step down here. The Go News will come after that. After that, then we have the uh, Walk On, normally, which pre uh, preludes the uh, message. All right? So let's govern ourselves accordingly. Thank you so much. God bless you.
Are you tired, worn out, and yes, burnt out on religion? It's a feeling too many of us know, a silent echo in the chambers of our souls. But what if there's a way out, a path, not just to relief, but to true, deep, lasting rest? This is not just an invitation, it's a promise from Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Walk with me, work with me, and watch how I do it. Imagine a journey where each step lightens your load, where each breath fills you with peace. Are you ready to take the first step to reclaim your life, your joy, your peace? Come, the journey begins with a simple yet profound step forward into a life illuminated by grace and character by love in How to Live Freely and Lightly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I know it's not too cold. I believe the weather will improve today. And regardless of the weather, I think the weather in heaven is always a crowd of victory. So if you believe that your victory is settled, will you stand on your feet and shout a better hallelujah? Listen, as believer in Christ Jesus, we need to, you know, there are some aspects of our lives that we will need to acculturate into the kingdom's culture. It's not going to happen by magic, so don't pray for it. It's not an automation. It is an adaptation. We cannot accept God, expect God to help us do this. We need to do this by acculturating ourselves into the kingdom's culture. In the kingdom of God, there is no moodiness. In the kingdom of God, there is always hilarious jubilation. In the kingdom of God, there is no bowing down of heads, except in worship. We need to acculturate ourselves because we belong in the kingdom of God. See, the people of the world may not read the Bible. They may not come to the church, but they can see. And when they see, they begin to ask questions. Rather than us chasing, they will chase. Why are you always happy? Why is it that nothing bothers you? What is going on? So as a result of that, we need to promise ourselves that we're going to adapt into the kingdom's culture. Hallelujah. So when you come to the church and you see something different, Remind your brother and your sister, we are in the sanctuary. And in the sanctuary of God, he said, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. When the Bible says, iron sharpened iron, no, when one is cold, the other one will warm him up. And so let your fire ignite me when I'm getting cold. Okay? Hallelujah. Let's speak to God on that note and say, Lord, ignite me with the fire of the Holy Ghost. 
because the Bible said, when the Holy Spirit come, he will ignite us, my paraphrase. He will ignite us with the kingdom culture. And so, Lord, help me adapt to the culture of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, as we go into your word this morning, I am praying for an epiphany for every man and every woman that will listen to my voice. There will be your voice and not my voice that they will hear in the name of Jesus. That you open the eyes of our heart and illuminate our heart to the deception, the surreptitiousness of Satan, that we may be enlightened in the light of life which you have given unto us. As we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to continue in the series that we started, How to Live Freely and Lightly. Last week, we tried to key into the season, and we established the fact that when you read the book of Matthew chapter 11 and you see the promises that God is, uh, is promising, like the prelude says, it's a promise, right? And you begin to question, okay, why, why should I believe this? Why should I trust in Jesus? And we established that resurrection is one of the key reasons why we can trust and believe whatsoever Jesus is promising us. Amen? Amen. We go back to that book of Matthew again. I'm going to try to do some recap and give some key points because I know this is massive. It's, there's no way we can, you know, finish everything that I would love to talk about, but we're going to give some bullet points that I want you to anchor on at the end of this uh, series so that when we go back to do our own self due diligence to study, we have some handles. Amen? Matthew chapter 11, and as I read again from verse number 28, now I'm reading from the message translation. It says, are you tired, worn out, born out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you will recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and walk with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the enforced rhythms of grace. I wouldn't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you will learn to live freely and lightly. Amen? Amen. If you pay attention to that scriptures, and that's why I love the message translation, you know, if you read all that translation, it says, come to me, all you that labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Accurate. The message translation looked into that scripture and began to extract what is behind it. Okay? And you see when he say, come to me, and you see some repeated words there, come to me, get away with me. And you see some repeated words such as learn, learn, learn the enforced rhythm of grace. Keep company with me. You know, there was a man of God that I love very much. His name is Billy Akane. Many of us may not know him. He said, the lion does not roar except there is a prey. And when you see God repeating a certain word over and over, he wants you to pay attention to it. When he says, come with me, that should have been enough. Get away with me, okay? And what was the third one? Keep company with me. So it's talking about relationship. It's talking about a deep relationship, a long-lasting relationship, not come and go. Something that is permanent, right? And that's why he's using some of those adjectives. But what I want to stress here is when he says, are you tired? Are you born out? Or born out on religion? And he says, come to me and you will recover your life. Automatically, we begin to stress a point that when he's saying tired, he's talking about tired of life. Are you tired of life? Is there any aspect of your life where you are tired? 
Because he said you will recover. And when he says recover, there must have been a loss. You don't recover except you lose something. Say you will recover. What have you lost in the state of tiredness, in the state of being born out? What is it that you have lost? He said, you will recover it. So when he says, are you tired? He's talking about every aspect of our lives where we're experiencing tiredness. If we are experiencing tiredness, it means something is not right. Here is the key. When you are tired, there is a stoppage. When someone is tired, he or she cannot continue in whatsoever it is he or she is doing. Is that right? So when he says, are you tired, it seems as if you are at a point where you are stopped. You have stopped. You're not moving forward. You are not progressing. And so the word, are you tired, connotes a lot of things. And it meets us at, every, at different places. The place where I'm at in my tiredness will be different from where you are in your tiredness. But the key is, is there any aspect of your life where you're tired? Is there any aspect of your life where you are stopped? There's no progress. You're not moving forward. Is there any aspect of your life where you are about giving up or you have already given up? Jesus is saying, come to me and you will recover. It is in invitation with a promise. Amen? 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 Last week, we talked about the fact that the fact that Jesus resur- I mean, died for our sin and was resurrected on the third day is one of the key evidence for you to believe that this will happen. And we'll give, give us some more as we progress. But some key point I want to highlight based on what we have discussed last Sunday, and for those of us who were able to tune in, in the tune-up during Wednesday, we said, number one, one of the key assurance for which we can believe that Jesus will deliver as promised is the fact of resurrection. He predicted his death, he predicted his resurrection, and God came true, and he was raised on the third day. And I said we can read, you know, the very, very profound argument of Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 if you, you know, want to understand more about this, this simple truth, about the fact that the key with the resurrection and the resurrected life of Jesus Christ is, the, is a foundation for us to hold on to. Otherwise, there will be no basis for us to believe anything Jesus came to do or whatever Jesus is saying to us. Number two, we establish that Christ has set us free to live a free life. We need to hold on to these key words. I'm going to try as much as possible to make sure I repeat them, and as we continue, we will add to them. These are the handles. The confidence you have in that you can live freely, you are, you are created in Christ Jesus to live freely, is that Christ resurrected from there. Number two, you have been set free. You are free, according to the scriptures. In the book of uh, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 that we read, it said, Christ has set us free to live a free life. You should no longer entertain bondage. You should no longer entertain anyone to dissuade you of this basic truth. You should live like a free board. Amen? Number three point that I want us to uh, keep in mind, and this is critical. We understand when we we went to look into the book of Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 3 that the purpose for our life, for which God created us, and the responsibility that God gives to us is critical. And we must never, ever forget it. Amen? And we will see how all of this connects back to our purpose and our responsibility as we move forward. Because Jesus is the principal epitome of this. We cannot afford to deviate or allow Satan to distract us 
from the purpose for which we are created, nor the responsibility that God gave to, to us. Why? The responsibility is the key to fulfilling the purpose. And nothing can stop God from accomplishing, accomplishing his purpose. Nothing. Amen? In the Garden of Eden, after God created man again, you can read in the book of Genesis chapter 1. I'm trying to, you know, because there are a lot I want to cover. Genesis chapter 1 from verse number 26, you, 20, 26, you see when God said, let us make human beings in our image, reflecting our nature. The purpose of human beings on earth is that when God created human beings, he wants his exact replica to be on earth. That every human being that God creates, God wanted them to look exactly like him and to reflect his nature. Meaning that whatsoever you see in me, you see in God. And that's why Jesus said, Philip, have I been with you three years? And you are still asking, where is the Father? Do you mean when you see me, you didn't see the Father? God, from the beginning, created us to reflect his image on earth. It then means that when we were seen here on earth, we must be reflecting his nature. It is an automation. It is something that is in our DNA. It is who we are. It is not what we do. I'm going to repeat that again. Reflecting God's nature, making God known on earth is who we are, not what we do. There's a difference between our purpose and our responsibilities. Responsibilities is what we do. Who we are is the reflector of God's image and God's nature on earth. So we don't have to struggle to be who we are. We may struggle to do our responsibilities. And we're going to see how all of this tied together. Number four, the devil, right from the beginning, is in the business of attacking God's word. And the reason he's doing that is to pervert God's purpose. And how he's doing that is to create distraction. The devil from the beginning attacks God's word in order to pervert God's purpose. He doesn't want God's, God's um, image or God's nature to Cover the earth. That's his fight. That's what the devil is fighting against. The knowledge of God covering the earth is the problem the devil has. The devil doesn't want that to, to, to happen. And the way he does it is to use the word of God. He, he attacks the word of God. And once he has done that, what he wanted to create is diversion, digression. He wants to have us focus on something else other than what God wants us to focus on. And again, we established that in Genesis 3, and I will try to repeat it as quickly as I can, but I want to make the fifth point. The fifth point that I want us to hold on to is that Jesus has the first-hand experience of living freely and lightly. So when he says, come to me, and you will learn how to live freely and lightly, it's because he has the first-hand experience. He came here on earth to show us how to do it. That's why the last aspect says, watch how I do it. Watch how I do it. Amen? So those are very critical points. We'll be going back to them, but I want to reestablish it. As we move forward, the next critical point I want us to have as in handle is that for this to work, before Jesus can help us to live freely, 
and lightly, we must have one thing, a ready heart. A ready heart. See, it is not everyone that comes to church that has this. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they have knowledge of all the scriptures. They master it. But when Jesus showed up, they were not ready. They have no ready heart for him. See, they, at some point, and I think we may probably want to read that in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, I'm going to progress into, into today uh, where we're going to begin to look at what does it mean when he say walk with me or walk with me or watch how I do it. I will see if we can cover those three <laughs> within this, the few minutes we have. Whatever we can touch, we we'll touch them. We can uh, repeat, uh, uh, maybe refine on Wednesday. Um, but let's start from Matthew chapter 13. A ready heart is a recipe that is a must before Jesus can help anyone live freely and lightly. Okay? Are we okay? Yes. Let's read uh, in Matthew chapter 13 from verse... Uh, I just, we, can, we can go back, but let's just pick it from verse 11. He said, he replied, because this is where they ask question, why are you talking in parables? Why are you, why are you telling stories? Why, why can't you just talk to the people plainly? Everybody is confused. They don't understand. And this is his reply. You've been given insight into God's kingdom. You know how it works. Not everybody has this gift. Not everybody. This insight, it hasn't been given to them. And pay attention to the next sentence. That's the next handle. Whenever someone has a ready heart for this, the insight and understandings flow freely. If there is no ready heart, you will struggle. When there is a ready heart, the insight and the understanding of the kingdom of God and how it works, it flows freely. So Jesus, when he's telling story, he's priming the heart of the people. He's trying to get them ready because until their heart is ready, he is helpless. He cannot help them. It doesn't matter how many prayers you pray. Until the heart is ready, Jesus cannot help. So he pranks people. He tells story. He gives parable. All with the idea of preparing their heart, getting them ready so they can receive. But as long as the heart is not ready, Jesus could not transfer what he has brought to deliver to humanity. So as we step into walking with me and working with me or washing, your heart has to be ready. That's why we're trying to go back in memory lane to Genesis so that our heart can be ready, so that we have a willing heart so he can deliver to us that which he has come to give us. Amen? So we're going to look at the first one when he says, walk with me. And like I said, keep company with me, get away with me, is talking about establishing a solid relationship. He's saying, this is not something you can just come and I preach five minutes and you go. No, you're not going to get it that way. You need to be ready to walk with me. You need to be on this caravan for the long haul. You need to camp with me. We need to go on some boot camping. You need to be ready to go a long journey with me. Otherwise, you are not ready for the kingdom's package. 
I have to deliver. And it can be done in a jiffy. You need to be prepared to come along with me on a long journey. An everlasting journey, in case if you're not getting it yet. It is not a trip of one day. It is not two days. It is not three days. You are in, and then you are in for the rest of your life. That's why he said, work with me. Keep company with me. Get away with me. No, we're not going to do the microwave style. That will not cut it. Walk with me. Why walk? Why walk? Every man and every woman that is in the, sp- in the place of tiredness, tired of life, born out of life, there is one thing that is definitely in that place. It is darkness. Darkness is definitely overshadowing that particular state of life. If a man is fed up about life, he can no longer see hope because there's darkness. The future is bleak, cannot see nothing. There is darkness. Why is that the case? You go back to Genesis chapter 1. Before God did a thing, there was first and foremost darkness. The Bible said darkness covers the earth. There was nothing that could be done. And the first thing God we did do was let there be light. Let there be light. Without illumination, Walk cannot proceed. No one walks at night. You need the daylight. You need illumination. When Jesus said, walk with me, again, whatever he says is what he sees the Father say. Whatever he does is what he sees the Father do. The Father never do anything without the light. In the beginning, there was light. In him, everything was made. Without him, nothing was made. The light, again, is the illumination that is necessary for the journey. So he said, walk with me because I am the light of the world. I am the light that lives need. There is something called the light of life, and that's me. When you walk with me, then you begin to see. Remember in Genesis when Satan in the form of serpent came to Eve? He said, well, God knows that as soon as you eat, then you will see what's really going on. That's light. You will see what's really going on. So Jesus in this journey is saying, if you want to come with me, you need light. So you have to walk with me because I am the light of life. And as you walk with me, your eyes will be open. Your understanding will be open. Everything that I've stopped, then you can see why it stopped and how to restart it. You will recover. You need to see why it stopped before you can recover. And without light, you ain't going to see it. You need light. That's why he said, walk with me. Let's read. Let's read as we navigate. I think we already quoted that, John chapter 1. If you have not, you know, captured that, you can read it um, from verse number 1. And um, we're going to probably do an example uh, quickly. There's no way I can uh, go through all of this. Let's just jump into the example of a man who was in darkness, who was tired, who was born out, couldn't sleep. See, in the state where you are tired of life, there are a lot of things. You know, there are a lot of things we can't even begin to 
uh, begin to itemize that you will notice. But we just pick this one example. I think it's the best example. There are several of them. I'll, give, I'll just give the Bible references. But this one I think is really, really interesting. And um, we see how light, when it shines in darkness, darkness could not comprehend it. That's why Jesus has to be by your side for you to recover whatsoever it is you have lost. Listen to me. There is no solution anywhere else on earth. The earthly problem has only one solution, heavenly solution, is Christ. Every earthly problem has one solution. Christ Jesus is the only solution. The manner in which it is manifested may be diverse, but the source is still one. It's in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so, we're going to quickly look at this example because we're in just walk with me and we are free to go. <laughs> so, let's look at Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2 uh, from verse number 22. And uh, we're going to look at this story. And I think I will paraphrase it because you're already familiar with this story. This is the story of King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? And so... Here is, wow, okay. Um, let's, let's go back, let's start from verse 1. I will review and then we jump back to this one because it may be a very, um, very, very critical to see some key points. Uh, Daniel chapter uh, chapter 2, I know it's a very long scripture. I'm going to see if I can just point to well, okay, let's, let's just read from verse number one quickly. He said, in the second year of his reign, King Nebuchadnezzar started having dreams that disturbed him deeply. When you are tired, you are troubled. You are deeply disturbed. When you get to the point where you are tired of life. The reason people commit suicide even when they don't really want to do it is because they can't see any other hope. It was dark, bleak. They thought every option had been exhausted and there's just no way out. They're deeply troubled. And the enemy capture on that trouble and then give them an easy way out. Quote and unquote. Amen? Here is a king who is in a dark place, deeply troubled. Okay? He couldn't sleep. He called in all Babylonian magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and, and, and fortune tellers to interpret his dream for him. Then they came and lined up before the king. He said to them, <laughs> this, is, this is really an amazing story. You know, this king is smart. Unfortunately, he's in a dark place. There are no human being on earth who help him except the God of heaven. All the magicians in Babylonian, Babylon could not help him. He said, I had a dream that I can't get out of my mind. I can't sleep until I know what it means. But Next verse. The fortune tellers <laughs> speak in an Arabic language. <laughs> and long live the king. Tell us the dream. And then we will interpret it. Isn't that logical? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, king, the king answered. The fortune teller, this is my decree. If you cannot tell me both the dream itself... <laughs> And its interpretation, I will have you ripped to pieces, limb from limb, and, okay. <laughs> Look at that. That's why I thought the king is smart. Because if you can tell me the meaning, why not tell me the dream? Because if you can't tell me the dream, how did you know the meaning? 
Isn't that logical? You have to know the dream to know the meaning. Why do I have to tell you the dream? Then you cook up story as the meaning. And today, a lot of us operate that way. We're listening to cooked up stories. And people try to tell us they are, they are magicians. That's, that's what they are. And they try to tell us something otherwise. But here is where it gets really troubling. Now, as a result of this, verse number 12. Let's go to verse 12. That set the king off. Because they said, king, what you're asking, nobody can do it. Nobody can deliver, and no king has ever asked of this. <laughs> and that's what set the king off. And he ordered their execution. But Daniel was caught up in that execution. As soon as the pronouncement was made, it means Daniel is included in that kill order. Amen? Amen. But not to waste much more time, let's jump back to, that, uh, uh, to the answer, how the answer came. Verse number 19. That night, the answer to the mystery was given to Daniel in a vision. Daniel blessed God of heaven, saying, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. He knows all, does all. He changes the seasons and guides history. He raises up kings and also brings them down. He provides both intelligence and discernment. He opens up the depths, tells secrets, sees in the dark. Light spills out of him. God of all my ancestors, all, I, I thank you. All praise, all thanks, all praise. You made me wise and strong. And now you've shown us what we ask. You solve the king's mystery. Walk with me. Because I am the light of the world. As soon as someone who has the light surfaced, the mystery was solved. That this is where it gets better. This is where it gets better. Let's jump to, if I can quickly find that. Uh, hmm, verse number 48. Oh, no, verse number 46. Number 46. When Daniel finished, King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his feet face in our before Daniel. <laughs> That's what light does. Yes. He ordered the offering of sacrifices and burning of incense in Daniel's honor. Next verse. He said to Daniel, and this is where you connect the purpose of God and the responsibility that he has given you that responsibility always helps fulfill the purpose. And one of the distractions the devil is creating is to give you other responsibilities. Because as soon as you are working on something else or you are focused on some other responsibility, God's purpose will be abandoned. See how purpose is fulfilled through responsibility here. Look at what Nebuchadnezzar said. He said, your God is beyond question. Yes, the God of all gods. Amen. The master of all kings. Yes, and he solves all mysteries. I know because you solved my misery. What is the reason for which we are created again?
to reflect what has Daniel just did? Amen? The light that Jesus carries helps us to reflect the image and the nature of God on earth. So when we walk with him, he empowers us. He helps us in our responsibilities because it is the areas of our responsibilities that the devil encamped. And it is the area where we get tired. It is the area where we get worn out. And the root cause of that is when the devil is able to again attack the word of God, manipulate us, and deviate our attention away from God's given responsibility where we are now focusing on sewing fig leaves rather than wear the designer dress that God made for you, Amen. you are now a fashion designer. <laughs> designing wigs. Designing fig leaves. The devil only distracted Eve from the adornment that God has given unto him. And before you know it, Adams and Eve, rather than wearing that designer Ready-made garment, now they are now sewing wigs for themselves. And that's the key why we need to understand the surreptitiousness of Satan. He has not changed his style. I hope time will permit us to see that example in the Lord Jesus himself. The distraction when we are boggled down with everything we do on earth, everything, the distraction that Satan is trying to create is to focus our attention on those distractions because as long as you are focused on those troubles, things that maybe troubles you, things that you consider the problem, as long as you are focused on that, you do not have time to do God's giving responsibility and there will be no way of fulfilling God's purpose. Here we see how light was shown and a king now declaring, because now he has seen the true God. Amen? In every of our assignments, that's what God wants to do. There are so many scriptures that we can give. I don't know if they pass out the notes, um, so that we can look into all of those at some point. We can see several other examples we we'll touch basis on this as time permits, amen? How do I now walk with Jesus? If walking with Jesus produces the light and the illumination that I need to be able to succeed, how do I do that? It's very simple. It's something we've always known. Psalms number 119 in verse 105. Psalm 119, verse number 105. It says, by your word, I can see where I am going. They throw a beam of light on my dark path. I have committed myself, and I will never turn back from living by your righteous order. By your word, I can see where I'm going. Even though I'm tired, I'm born out, I'm worn out, as soon as your light comes, I see where I'm going. Because your light shines in my darkness. And darkness could not comprehend it. Amen? So we walk with Jesus in his word. In his word. If we are not going to pay attention to his word, then it may be very difficult for us to understand how to walk in the light of life which he had created for us. Second Timothy chapter 3, you can read that one. From verse number 16 to 17 is another one, good one that we can hold on to. How do I walk with Jesus? It is by his word. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what the glory he sheds on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us in 
And with all who we trust and obey, trust and obey, for it's no other way to be happy in Jesus and to trust and obey when we walk with the Lord. In the light of his world, what the glory shines on our way. When we do his will, he abides with us here. Now we are lost and obey. him by his word. His words bring illumination when we are at the darkest place of our heart. When we are tired, when we are born out, when we are born out of religion, a word from the Lord Jesus Christ will illuminate our heart and our path. And then we will see the way out. Amen? Amen. So, we're going to wrap up there. Um, so, we're supposed to still look at the other two, but we'll see how this will work. Um, next, next, next week, we're going to be looking at uh, walking with him and uh, watching how he does it. How did he live um, freely and lightly? We're going to be looking at the key points for today again. Um, number six, I think we mentioned five already. We said a ready heart is mandatory. A ready heart is mandatory for Jesus to be, help, to be able to uh, help us live um, freely and lightly. Number seven, navigating through life requires illumination. That's the handle I want us to keep. Navigating through life requires illumination, and Jesus brings that illumination. And that's why it says, walk with me. John chapter 1, we say verse 1 through verse 4. Psalm number 119, 105 through 112 is the handle. Number eight, when we sign on and commit to the work Jesus is doing, that one we're going to be talking about maybe hopefully in the, in the Bible study or maybe on Sunday, then we can touch basis on that. So let's stop at number seven for now. Um, so we'll probably, you know, kind of highlight these handles and, and let everyone have it. Um, I send it to the office so we can have all of those. Those are the things I want us to hold on to as we uh, go in this journey so that we can at least um, have something to revert back to. So let's stand on our feet as we uh, talk to God. Um, this is where we're able to stop today. Um, again, As long as we have a ready heart, Jesus, we unpackage into our lives. And we begin to see and differentiate between what is real and what is just um, mere, I don't know what, I don't want to use some foul language. Right, so what is real and what is unreal, <laughs> amen? <laughs> so as long as our heart is open, Jesus will help us to cipher between the shafts so we can see what truly God has made us for and what we are made of and what we are supposed to focus on doing. So the devil is all about distracting from the core responsibility so as to ensure we don't fulfill purpose. But as far as God is concerned, nothing will stop. He said, I'll build my church upon this, and the gate of hell shall not 
prevail upon Jesus Christ. Amen? So let's talk to Jesus as a light that illuminates our path. If there be any areas of our lives today that we're experiencing darkness, if there be any areas where we just don't know the way out, we don't know how to figure it out, and we're saying, I'm fed up, I'm tired, I'm worn out, I don't know what else to do. It seems as if there's no way. I want you to ask Jesus. Say, Jesus, I want to walk with you because I know you have the light of life. And let's ask for the light of life in those areas today. Lord, give me the light of life in this area. Mention those specific areas. And if you know any of your friends, your relatives, that you think might be in the dark place right now, I want you to talk to God on their behalf and just ask for the light of life. That the Lord will release the light of life unto them so that they can begin to walk with Him. And as they walk with Jesus, they begin to see that they have been set free there's not supposed to be any more bondage. And as we talk to God, let's thank him because we know he had answered. As we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Thank you, Father. Father, we just want to thank you for your word. We thank you because we will trust your word as you lead us and guide us with the light of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Next time when somebody wants to interpret your dream, tell them to tell you their dream, your dream first. <laughs> tell them, tell me that dream first, and I'll believe what you're saying. If, if you cannot tell me the dream, I can't trust what you're saying. <laughs> Amen. The Bible talks about the children of this world are smarter. <laughs> Amen. All right, let's just um, let's get ready, but before then, let's take our offerings. And um, I would like to give you a report of some of the offerings, but uh, first of all, get your offerings ready. Methods of giving, yeah. The methods of giving are there. Text, give, checks. You can go online, and then you connect to PayPal and all of that. Give. It's God has directed you, but I want you to know that God loves a cheerful giver. So give it cheerfully. Whatever you want to give, give it cheerfully. Give it cheerfully. All right. Are we ready? If we are ready, let's make our way to the front as the ushers direct us. Let's make our way to the front as the ushers direct us. Okay, thank you. All right.
right, before we go to the next thing, I just have an information that I want to share with you. Can you give me uh, the slides? I have two slides that I wanted to give you. All right. Special project pledges. I just want to remind you. Uh, we need to be reminded every time. Am I correct? Uh, so the special project. All right. Here's a, this first slide shows uh, the pledges, what we are projected or we're projecting to raise $100,000. The pledges that have come in so far is $51,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I hope that we can push these pledges to that $100,000 and over. Just cross over the $100,000 uh, line. All right? Now, let me get a second. All right. Now, late breaking news. Um, I'll give you a late breaking news, but here's it. We're projecting to raise 100000 but so far, the actual money we have raised, the actual money that has come in, the actual cash we have on hand is $24,070. But scratch that. All right, late breaking. Scratch that. I can gleefully announce to you that this morning, as at this morning, we have $34,070. So this was during the week, but this morning, this morning, I said this morning, say this morning. Okay. <laughs> you know, your morning will break very soon in Jesus' name. All right, say this morning again. This morning, this morning somebody that made a pledge of $10,000 Give up the 10,000, and that's why we're at 34,000. So I'm happy, but my joy is yet to be fulfilled. All right? <laughs> Until we get to that $100,000. All right? Yeah. So um, I'm, 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 going to, I'm going to let you know that, you know, there are some expenses that have come in which, are, which were unexpected. So this year, that, you know, we are, we are on the hook this week now. To pay fifteen thousand three hundred dollars, I would not plan for fifteen thousand three hundred dollars. So we need every dime of this coming, right? Uh, Gwinnett County uh, held us on a hook. We need we need to fix the dam that was there. Or is it dam or pond or whatever the retention, whatever the thing is that's there? All right. So if we didn't get it right, we we're going to shut us down. But now it has been approved. Got it cleared. And everything, and this week, we have to make good with fifteen thousand three hundred dollars that we do not plan for. So, all right. Um, but the good news is our God still supply every of our needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He wants us to partner with Him, for He's still able. All right. Tell your neighbor He's able. Praise God. All right. Now I'm confident that he's able. All right. All right. Uh, before we leave, we're going to uh, uh, take our communion. Uh, there are people here who only come during communion. God will forgive you. <laughs> One of them is not even looking at me at this moment. The person is, the face is somewhere else. <laughs> because they know that's the only, that I'm talking to them specifically. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's just take our communion. Let's just do it. It's in remembrance. Say, do this in remembrance of me. All right? As we do it, we remember all that he has done for us. All right? Not what he has done against us. Not what the devil is thinking about you. You see, sometimes we give the devil too much credit. Just think of what he has done for you. And remind yourself what he has done for you. One of the things that we heard this morning is that God has created us and rectified it by his, by his blood that we should be a reflector of his image. So this morning as you take this communion, I want you to remember that. That God, I am your express image. But help me to be able to reflect that image everywhere I go. In everything I do whoever I come in contact with. 
let me be a reflection of that image indeed. Because you promised it and you sealed it, you signed it with your blood. Let's do that as we, let's think of that as we take the bread or take together. Then we'll take the cup too. We'll take. And if you're at home, just get something that represents the body of Christ. It's a symbol of the body of Christ and get something that symbolizes the blood of Jesus. As we do it together. Hallelujah. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. nothing that escapes the blood. That's why the Bible says it speaks better things than the blood of evil. And it's speaking better things concerning you today. If you are tired, it is speaking strength concerning you. If you are weak, it is speaking recovery concerning you. And for those who are broke, it is speaking restoration to you. If you are sick, it is crying healing for you. I just want you to know that nothing escapes the blood. It has been paid for. And God recognizes the fact that the blood has stepped into the sea. Because of that, it is declaring that we are free. We are, we, are, we are free. I said you are free today. I said you are free today. I said you are free today. In the name of Jesus. Because whosoever the Son shall set free is free indeed. And he set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet this morning. And I want you to go in this strength. Go in this thy power, go in this strength this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Knowing that God has freed you to reflect and to express his image 
in the name of Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. We honor you. Thank you for today's service. We thank you for all that has been done for us. Thank you for the renewing of our minds this morning. We thank you for the change of our perspectives this morning. We thank you for uh, the, the, the visions that we see. We thank you, oh God, for renewing our strength this morning. We thank you for encouraging us this morning. We thank you for lifting us up this morning. We thank you for showing us hope this morning and helping us to embrace a new level of hope this morning. Father, we give you praise. We thank you because this week will not be the same again like it was before in the name of Jesus. Because we are stepping into new things, new territories in the things that you have committed for us. Father, we thank you. Your vision for this house cannot be overcome by darkness. Instead, the light of Jesus Christ is lifting us up and helping us to fulfill the fact that we're a Jesus community that is graced to serve the world everywhere we go. We thank you this week that as we go out, everybody will feel a reflection of the image of God in our lives in the name of Jesus. Like Daniel displayed your image to Nebuchadnezzar, we thank you because that same grace is available for us and we grab a hold of it this week in the name of Jesus. So that rather than we pursuing, they are pursuing us because they see your image in us. And they are declaring, who is your God? Because we want to follow that your God. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you and we honor you. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Now say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Say to that person, surely, his goodness and his mercy is accompanying you so that you can be his image this week and continuously and you will live in the house of the Lord continuously forever and ever in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.